Stinky little guy. The lighting in this is probably gonna be all over the place because the sun's been coming in and out and I checked the weather and it's not gonna get any better. So just heads up. I hope you're doing good. I'm doing good. And here's another glass from my collection. Check it out. It's got these little circles on it and I don't know where it's from because I thrifted it. So sorry. I posted a poll on my Instagram story yesterday asking if you guys would rather see renter friendly tips, advice, recommendations, or if you would rather see me decorate the inside of a house from Reddit. There's like a whole subreddit dedicated to like people asking for advice. I was gonna do that. But at the time, the recommendations were getting voted for the most. So I prepared for that. And then I woke up this morning and the other one actually won by 20%. So we're just gonna have to like put that one on the back burner and cook it later because <laughs> I already planned for this one. So here's renter friendly tips, advice, recommendation. It's kind of like an amalgamation of things. I tried to kind of think outside the box a little bit with some of them. That way it wasn't just me repeating things that you've probably already heard in other people's videos, but a girl can only do so much. There are some that you've probably already heard, if not all of them. And some of them are just personal taste as decor goes. So take it with a grain of salt. You don't have to follow these. I don't think they should be like rules or anything. It's just things that I would recommend for people that are renting. The first thing I'd recommend is to focus on distracting instead of covering. A lot of people move into a new space and especially recently immediately think like, what can I cover with peel and stick? Or like, what color can I paint this room? With both of those things, painting and peel and stick and wallpaper and all that other stuff, you can pour a lot of money into that and then not really be able to take it with you. So it's kind of just money that's wasted. Though if you like really want to do it, I think you should. If you think it'll dramatically improve your quality of life, go ahead and do it. But I just don't think it's always necessary. You also have to consider that if you paint or peel and stick an area, you might actually end up hating that before it's even time to leave. And then you're pouring more and more money into fixing this thing that really didn't even need to be there to begin with. <laughs> I think it's safer and easier to just work on distracting from whatever it is that you don't like. Put some rugs down if you hate the flooring, put art on the wall if you feel like it's a little bit boring, you could use something. These are easy things. And if you end up disliking those things, it's an easy fix. You can just sell them or move them around. You don't have to put more money into painting the wall that you hate the color of or taking the peel and stick off that you ended up not liking and then replacing with something that you also might not like that's gonna go in the trash can when you're done with it. So you see what I'm saying. Work on distracting first and then paint or peel and stick or whatever it is that your creative little heart desires. <laughs> this one is kind of going against what I just said. <laughs> in terms of like being able to reuse something, this does not fit into that category. It's Velcro command strips and the Velcro ones specifically. Don't talk to me about the sticky command strips. I'm not down for those. The Velcro ones specifically could hold an entire building from falling apart. I've used them on so many different surfaces for so many different things and they have never once let me down. They're a little bit pricey, but they are worth it. Another reason why they're better than a regular command strip is because the regular command strips is just one single piece and once you take it off, it's done. You're done for. But with the Velcro ones, it comes in two strips and they Velcro together. There's one on the wall, one on the art or whatever it is you're trying to hang. So if you have one picture with Velcro and another picture with Velcro, you can swap them because the Velcro is still on that space on the wall. Does that make any sense? Just get one, test it out. You'll see what I mean. I have a picture in my kitchen right now that's held up by a command strip because I can't drill into the tile, obviously. And that thing's going strong. It's been over a year. He's still there. He's still hanging, never once came off. And I'm not gonna show you that it's held up by Velcro because I am scared that it will fall off if I move it or touch it or sometimes even look at it. But just trust me, there is a Velcro command strip on the back of that picture and it's doing its job. <laughs> in almost every single Renter Friendly Tips video, lighting is mentioned. And in almost every single home decor video I've made, lighting is mentioned and I'm about to mention it again. Change the bulbs out, especially if you live in an apartment complex because there's a good chance that the lighting in the kitchen and in the bathroom are cool toned. And if you have lazy management, probably everywhere else. <laughs> Whenever I moved into this place, I had a huge issue with the bathroom because it felt so sterile and so uninviting and it was actually 
really uncomfortable for me. I realized this because the lighting in there was so bright white. And once I changed the bulbs out, it really made the bathroom feel a lot better. It's not scary anymore. I go in there, I'll hang out in there. I'm not scared. If you're not like familiar with lighting temperature, basically the scale of lighting temperature is measured in Kelvin. It's represented by a K. So if you look at a bulb box, you'll see at some area of the box that it has a K next to a probably pretty big number. The lower the number, the warmer. The higher the number, the cooler. Normally in residential spaces, it's always under 4,000 because 4,000 is kind of the cutoff. After that, it gets a little weird. We're getting in hospital territory. You probably don't want that in your house, I'd assume. That's for like getting in there. That's for heart surgery, you know? <laughs> We're not, probably not doing that in our houses, I don't think. Look on the lower end of the scale. I personally prefer somewhere between like 2300 to 3500. I feel like that's a really good warm tone. I think the one in my bathroom is 3500. The one in my kitchen's a smart bulb, so I can change it depending on what's going on. That's another tip. Get smart bulbs if you can afford to do that and want to do that. I have them scattered around my house and they're great for changing the mood, just depending on what I'm doing and how I'm feeling. Like if I'm watching movies and I want the, the vibe to be very, um, ambient <laughs> just make it like zero <laughs> this one's also lighting oriented and you definitely heard it before but make sure you have multiple lighting sources in every room almost i would say every room but there are some that you like really don't need it like the bathroom i just bought a lamp for my bathroom and it'll be in the next video and a lot of videos that talk about light sources they recommend changing out your pendants or like your sconces and I would also recommend that, but I'm not going to, just because I don't do that. And I feel kind of like a hypocrite being like, you should do this thing that I don't do, but you should do it, but I'm not going to. I don't want to just because one, I'm scared. Um, I guess I like have probably seen too much like Looney Tunes and too many movies because I'm terrified of explosions. And I know, <laughs> I know it wouldn't explode if I tried to change a a light fixture out and I did it wrong, it, it probably wouldn't explode. But like, I kind of feel like it could, <laughs> so anyway. I would just recommend getting like, you know, lamps, obviously. Plug-in sconces are great. You never see somebody with just a plug-in sconce. Get a plug-in sconce. I talked about it in the last video. They look great. If you really hate the cord hanging down, there are some cord covers that are very discreet that will change your life probably. I wouldn't know. I like a cord hanging down. Obviously having various sources of lighting is good for like tasks and stuff, reading, doing homework, cooking, stuff like that. It's also gonna add interest to the room because you have different spots for your eye to follow. Also it looks incredible at night. Very, very good at night when you have like eight lamps in one room. Looks great. Lighting is the number one thing. The most important thing. You could have like one chair in a room with a book on the floor next to it. And as long as there's a lamp in there, it's gonna look incredible. <laughs> you can try to argue with me. I can, I can see it in my head, it looks great. I've got another one to go against what I just said, and it's to embrace darkness. If you're someone that loves natural lighting and you don't have a lot of it, that sucks. But I would say you should try to embrace the darkness of that space. Unfortunately, you can't just bust a hole in the wall. I mean, you probably could, but you'd most likely go to jail and that would be so much more expensive than just embracing the fact that there was no natural light in there to begin with. For instance, I don't have a window in my bathroom. I'm planning on painting my bathroom a dark color and I would recommend that for everybody that has a little space like a bathroom or an entryway that's already naturally kind of dark. Lean into it, make it darker, make it moodier. It'll feel more natural than trying to make the space look like it's lighter than it is. And when I say dark, I don't mean black. I don't mean painted black. I really wouldn't recommend painting any sort of wall or ceiling black. I just don't think that's the move. Sometimes, I'm sure, but I've never seen it. <laughs> just like really, really dark colors that aren't black would probably look great in any sort of dark area. I think I'm gonna go, actually, we'll leave that one for the next video. I was just about to tell you what kind of color I was about to paint the bathroom, but I'll tell you next time. You don't need to know that right now. You've got a lot on your mind. On the same topic, another thing is to keep the lighting kind of low, especially if you don't need really bright lighting, like in an entryway or most of the time in a bathroom, keep it warm and low. That'll help tie in the dark color and also give you a light source that feels right for a dark area like that. I need a refill. This next one's gonna sound a little scary if you live in a small space, but stick with me. Don't be afraid of 
buying big furniture. Usually when somebody's renting a smaller space, they're more inclined to get smaller furniture because it's cheaper and it's easier to move. But big furniture is so impactful in a small space. It makes it look more unified and the furniture looks more solid. So it looks like it's supposed to be there. It'll make the place feel a lot homier. Couches, entertainment centers, dressers, desks, dining tables, if you have room for that. Even like bar carts, getting any of those things in a bigger scale than you might feel pulled to when you're in a smaller space will make it look so much better. Don't buy that stuff off of Amazon, dude. Don't even like look at Amazon for furniture. I'm so serious. For decor and small things like utensils and light bulbs and whatever, have at it. But when it comes to furniture, don't look in Amazon's direction. Look this way. This over here, this is Facebook Marketplace and the thrift stores, all right? That's south. We're going north. We're going in opposite directions. Don't look at her. She means nothing to you. We're going this way. You can find so much cool stuff. And if you live in like a rural area, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've been there. I lived in a rural area for 18 years. There's nothing out there. If you can travel, travel outside of your area. I'm talking go like an hour, two hours even outside of your area and look around. Facebook Marketplace, change your location. You don't live in the middle of nowhere. You live in that little populated town where they have thrift stores and people trying to get rid of stuff. I really recommend traveling outside of where you're at if you live rurally. They have nothing for you out there. I really, truly do empathize with that. And then, you know, eventually, if whenever you go to move out, you can't get any help to move those bigger pieces of furniture and you're willing to part with them, you can always sell them. If you're getting them cheap to begin with, you can probably sell them at the same price or a little bit higher, depending on how well you took care of it. And there you go. Tell them they gotta come pick it up. It's taken care of. Don't even worry about it. This is the last piece of advice that I have. And it's something that I had to learn from in the most painful way. Don't feel tied down to the architecture of the space that you're in. This can go one of two ways. You can either be in a really, really nice rental that you feel like you have to match the style of, or you can be in a really, really boring rental that you feel like you have to tone down your style because of. They definitely go hand in hand, but I experienced the first one and it is actually heartbreaking in hindsight <laughs> because I could have done so much with that place. I went in the route of buying things just because I thought they would look good in the space, not because I actually liked them. I ended up getting rid of almost every single thing that was in that apartment because when I was moving, I was like, well, I didn't even like it. I just had it because it was for that house specifically. And I made a complete 180 in terms of how I went about buying things for this apartment. I only have things in here that I plan on moving with. There is nothing that I can think of off the top of my head besides this couch that I will be getting rid of when I leave because I love every single thing. I would never go the route of buying things just because I felt like they fit the space again. Because what was that about? I wasted so much money and I wasn't even completely happy with it in the end. It looked fine. It was cohesive. People came over and they were like, wow, I don't even feel like you live here because it wasn't my style. I was going off the style of the house. Don't do that. If you live in a boring white and gray apartment like I do, that's a blank space and you need to see that as a good thing. But also if you live in a beautiful space with wood floors that was built in the 1920s, honor that, but don't feel like you have to stick to it, you know? Oh my God, what I would do to that place if I was in it now. It would look so different. Oh my God, I don't even wanna, I shouldn't even think about it. I actually might make a video about that just so I can get over it and stop thinking about it. And there were so many good thrift stores. If you guys live in a place with savers, I am so jealous of you. I miss savers so much. We're in the trenches in Florida. There's like no good thrift stores. I have one, one good thrift store and it's like 40 minutes away from me. The other ones are all like, you know, those curated thrift stores that are way overpriced. I'm gonna throw a fit. I'm gonna throw a fit. <laughs> I hope this was helpful in some way. I hope you got something out of it. And if you didn't, I hope you at least enjoyed. The next video should be a vlog type video like I was doing before I went on my 7,000 year hiatus. And it's gonna be fun and I'm gonna make sure of it. I'll see you next time. Bye.